How wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing some really exciting discoveries from right here in the Milky Way galaxy, and specifically the discoveries in regards to the mysterious dark matter. And that's because a recent analysis based on 15 years of observations from the NASA's Fermi telescope suggests that we might have finally discovered some signs of dark matter coming from the outskirts of our galaxy. And so today we're going to discuss exactly what was discovered and what it potentially means. But I guess first just a brief introduction of why this is a mystery and what we're discussing. And the mystery here is at least a century old. Technically this is one of the most profound and one of the most stubborn mysteries in the universe. And we know that it has to be out there. It seems to influence a lot of stuff around us, it seems to influence galaxies and galactic clusters, but we just have not directly observed dark matter, or at least definitively observed it, in any spectrum of light. And so it seems to be more or less invisible. But even as far back as 100 years ago, the famous astronomer Fritz Zwicky inferred the existence of dark matter by looking at unusual missing mass from the galaxy cluster known as the Coma Cluster. Here, based on initial calculations and initial analysis, he estimated that in order for this cluster to even exist and for these galaxies not to fly away from each other, there had to be at least 8 to 9 times more mass than was physically visible. With additional observations by Vera Rubin in 1970s, also discovering that the galactic spin could only be explained if each galaxy is observed so far contained way more mass than simply visible in stars, gas and dust. But even in the last few decades, by observing things like, for example, gravitational lenses, researchers confirmed that there has to be more mass than we physically see, and it just cannot be explained by anything, except for maybe some kind of an invisible particle that has not been discovered yet, that seems to be all over the place. And so the simple truth is that the gravity we observe seems to be far greater than the gravity produced by all of the visible matter. And this excess gravity suggests that the universe is filled with something else that we just have not found yet. And that something else represents up to 86% of all matter. So basically only 15% is visible stuff. But at the moment we define dark matter by what it doesn't do. Specifically it doesn't emit, absorb or reflect light because it does not interact with anything through electromagnetic spectrum. But it does interact with things gravitationally. And that by itself is not unusual though, because we know that neutrinos, for example, also don't interact with anything using electromagnetism, but can interact with things through the weak force. And for many years, the leading candidate for dark matter was a particle referred to as WIMP, weakly interacting massive particle. This is essentially what scientists have been trying to find using relatively expensive experiments for the past couple of decades. And so here it's theorized that when these WIMPs collide, sometimes on certain occasions, they can collide with their own antiparticle, which then forces annihilation, which as we know from other particles usually results in a lot of radiation. Specifically, they produce gamma rays. And so at least in theory, we could maybe see these particles indirectly by discovering certain gamma rays in certain locations where dark matter particles have been predicted to exist in relatively large quantities. And that means that we actually have one tool that seems to be the best for trying to find them. And that's of course the famous Fermi telescope, the NASA's gamma ray telescope that in the past few years actually produced this, an incredible gamma ray map of the entire night skies. And this telescope basically operates like every other space telescope. It stares at one spot collecting all of the data, and then scientists on Earth stitch this all together, producing maps. And it's been doing this for the past 17 years. Possibly longer if you're watching this in the future. And the majority of gamma rays it's discovered is produced by extremely high energy particles, usually cosmic rays, and very often through the interaction with interstellar gas and dust. But back in 2010, two years after it started operating, it made its first stunning and unexpected discovery, Fermi bubbles. Structures that represented two giant lobes of gamma ray emissions stretching above and below the galactic center right here in the Milky Way. And they were actually really large, approximately 50,000 light years across. With the additional observations approximately 8 years later, also discovering that some of this is visible in the X-rays too. And here these Fermi bubbles emit gamma rays that are higher in energy than most of the light coming from the rest of the galactic disk. With their sheer size implying that they're extremely powerful, or were produced by something very powerful, most likely coming from the central region of the galaxy. And whatever happened in the center must have happened approximately 10 million years ago. And today, based on some of the previous explanations, it's believed that they're probably caused either by the emissions from the central black hole, 
or possibly some kind of a very active event involving lots of star formation inside the galactic center that basically released a lot of powerful winds traveling over a thousand kilometers per second, which then slammed into the galactic gas, creating these massive shockwaves that produced all of the radiation. And so there's no exact explanation yet, but just based on the shape and the velocity of the gas, it's assumed to have been formed by something in the center. And by the way, you can learn more about this phenomenon in one of the previous videos in the description. But it just so happens that the same area where we find these enormous bubbles, we also expect to find a galactic halo containing dark matter. As a matter of fact, we expect it to be highly concentrated in these regions, just based on previous simulations. And so here there's actually a slight chance that some of these signals coming from these bubbles are not just coming from these initial emissions, but may also be coming from dark matter annihilation. But trying to figure out what's what is of course the biggest challenge. Which brings us to this new study you can find in the description by a Japanese researcher Tamanori Totani. And yeah, this is his profile picture on the internet. So obviously I had to talk about his research. And well, the goal of this study was to try to model and then subtract all of the known sources of gamma rays inside the galactic halo in order to point out sources that may actually result from, for example, cosmic ray interactions, some kind of a background coming from far away, and of course, Fermi bubbles themselves. But then to also discover what's actually left behind if we subtract everything. So here this was a search for any statistically significant residual glow. And turns out that something was actually discovered. And so what exactly did they find when everything was subtracted? Well, right now this leftover glow is kind of bizarre. First of all, most of it seems to be peaking around 20 giga electron volts. For gamma rays, this represents some kind of a really heavy interaction and somewhat powerful particles. Likewise, its shape and its location seems to be more or less spherically symmetric. Surprisingly, a lot of the shape here matches the gravitational distribution expected from smooth dark matter halo, and to some extent is actually what we do expect to find. Basically here is how it compares to the model. And in terms of the total energy of individual particles, it seems to match the profile for these WIMPs, weakly interacting massive particles. And especially because the spectrum produced, the rise and fall of radiation, seems to be consistent with gamma rays produced if dark matter WIMPs were constantly annihilating. And if this signal is truly dark matter annihilation, the estimated mass for each of these particles is approximately 0.5 to maybe 0.8 tera electron volts. For reference, this is about 500 times more massive than the mass of a single proton. So not like super massive, but pretty massive. And so if this is indeed what we're seeing, and if this is WIMP annihilation, it would mark the first time humanity has officially discovered dark matter. And it would also involve particles that we currently do not understand and are not technically part of the standard model of physics. So this would signify a potentially major development in astronomy and in fundamental physics. But obviously here we have to be super careful. First, we have to be careful because this is a single author study and it has not really been analyzed by other scientists yet and we have not heard additional explanations or alternative explanations. And for these types of discoveries, there's always going to be someone else that possibly sees something else and provides additional evidence. Likewise, a lot of these emissions can also be caused by something entirely different, which we have discussed in one of the previous videos in regards to the emissions from the center of the galaxy that have also been sort of mystifying scientists for several years. You can learn more about this in one of the videos in the description, but here for many years this was also believed to be dark matter, but scientists now think that it's probably something slightly different, very likely related to neutron stars. And so here it's important to emphasize that this is not a definitive proof of dark matter's existence yet, but it is a very powerful piece of evidence that seems to be very consistent with the hypothesis. And so here we do require scientific consensus, which means that we need to wait while scientists try to exclude all other possibilities. As a matter of fact, there is still a possibility of some kind of an unknown astrophysical source with the exactly the same spectrum and morphology that could have produced all of these emissions. Now right now we don't really know what this could be, but it could be something we never thought of before. And the other important side note here is that this discovery, this 20 GV halo-like excess in the Fermi halo, is distinct from the previous older mystery involving the galactic center excess, which usually peaks at much lower energies of 2 to 3 giga electron volts. And so the older analysis of galactic center gamma ray excess which also supports the idea of dark matter annihilation, seems to also produce a different signal that's technically much weaker. And though this could mean that there might be several particles that we still don't understand, it could also mean that some of these signals may be produced by something much more mundane and something that we still haven't considered yet. 
Either way though, both of these signals seem to be real, and both of them are now a new type of an astronomical mystery. Mysterious gamma ray excess, whose origin cannot be explained, that seems to be produced by something in huge amounts around the Milky Way galaxy. But while these indirect detections are quite promising, it's really the direct detection that would prove this once and for all. And unfortunately, after two decades, we still don't really have any evidence for any particles interacting with anything on Earth yet. Now, there are some experiments that are still going on, like the Crest experiment deep underground in Italy, but nothing has been seen yet, with no detections of any WIMPs as of 2025. But in this case, they're not looking for the same energies. As a matter of fact, none of these detectors would even be able to see if these WIMPs were so massive. This is because they mostly focus on the traditional WIMP mass, which is believed to be much lower, anywhere from 9 to maybe 100 giga electron volts. So possibly up to about 10 times less massive. And so those previous experiments discovered nothing. But maybe that's why. Maybe WIMPs are more massive, which is why some of them have passed through our planet without interacting with matter, and we were just looking for a different thing. And so this crust experiment, for example, is technically looking for a much lower mass and may never even be able to see this. Although right now, there are some limitations in producing such an experiment, so it might be a while before we can physically detect anything like this on Earth. But one way to possibly prove that this is real is by detecting similar signals around other galaxies. So if we actually find very similar observations of 20 giga electron volts around the nearby galaxies, such as the Andromeda, it might take us a little bit closer to solving this mystery. With the additional future telescopes such as the CTAO or the Cherenkov Telescope Array Observatory, potentially discovering even more gamma ray emissions and helping us map all of these mysterious particles, which might actually align directly with locations where we expect a lot of dark matter. And so this new discovery using 15 years of Fermi data does currently suggest that there is something mysterious going on in the Milky Way halo that might need additional explanations. Now we don't really know if this is new types of particles, dark matter particles, or some new bizarre physics, or some new sources we never considered before, but it seems to be something, which means that we'll probably come back and discuss this more in some of the future videos once there are some updates. And until then, check out some of the previous videos in the description. Thank you for watching, subscribe, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon where you can find additional videos, videos without any ads and can DM me directly, or by joining the channel membership that grants you early access. You can also support this channel by buying the wonderful person t-shirt in the description below. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.